There we go. So sharp shirts. Yeah, we uh, almost got them. Good morning. Good morning. So what contact info do I want to give out for you? Phone number, email, yeah, I mean, website. Uh, yeah, so you get the main office phone number. Okay, 916 6786. Okay. And then the email, um, obviously, um, is read.bombmerton read at childcancer.org. And then, uh, I guess, for the uh, website, you know. Okay, we got about five and a half okay. minutes of air time. Let's check the mics. This is for Gala, which are highly directional, so you have to speak. Oh, yeah. yes. You can talk across his um, so your radio shack mics require you. Oh, uh, mine doesn't. I don't have to be directional on mine. I didn't know that. No, yours on mine. Well, most nice. yeah, no, no, that's well, how you're that. supposed to do. If you talk across it, you don't pop your P's and the simple in essence come through. Okay. Yeah, yours, but these these are flea market. <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> and then well, there's some radio shack you can open out because this is yours. You're gonna want the headphones when we're on the air because it just makes it better. Your old head that she's been doing these things. You will. Once. <laughs> oh, I don't don't swallow the, the phone. Please. I remember that. So. Do we want to give the website for the gala? Yeah, we can there. So Absolutely. it's childcancer.org yeah. forward slash gala. Forward slash gala. Yeah. Okay. Is it backslash forward slash gala? I don't know. Yeah. And it's October 20th? Yes. What time? 5 30 to 10 30. And where's it at? The center at 2300. We'll get more specific. Yeah, perfect. Okay. Things look great on camera. Yeah, she's got a little faster. There you go. That's why you want to be here, right? You want, to, you want to try to get the mics ready before we go in there because we've had that before and you pull it and it'll fall out. <laughs> go on, so. The bigger it quick hit. There you go. All right, Jerry, check, check. Check, check. Go ahead, Sarah. Check. Check. Check, check. A little louder. Speak again. Do it again. Go ahead and speak again. Yeah, it's hard oh. to hear in the headphones. Check, check. Check, check. We can barely hear you. She's on two. Speak a little bit louder. Chuck, Chuck. That's better. Check, check. Is there a way to turn the volume up on these? You can turn the volume up there. Oh, yeah. There we go. Okay. That's better. Hmm. And it's the volume on the headphones. It's hard to hear you, but I'll hear you and hear. Yeah, totally. totally. Okay. <laughs> yeah, when we're on the air, you'll hear much better. It'll okay. actually get a little louder. So. Oh, okay. There we go. That's good. Thank you. So we'll just uh, introduce you guys, go into some background for both of you, a few roles, and then, you know, get into what KCC does, who we work with, mm -hmm. maybe name change, expansion to Oakland, some of that kind of stuff. Sure. How we're Need with your questions and we'll Yeah, looking to maybe grow the board some. So, mm -hmm. okay, perfect. So, why don't you put these in? Just wait. Or I guess you have to go next. Yeah. We'll follow you. Okay. okay. Very good. But thank you. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. yeah, this is something fun. different. Mm -hmm. Fun way to start my day. Yeah, it's a busy day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, work on. I gotta do all the live auction searches for the program. And I'm still waiting on information for some of these live auction items. Was that right? We may have a supplement going into the program, I think. So <laughs> that'll work. When do you have to have the program to the printer? Uh by Monday. Oh gosh. Yeah. So we're pretty much got most of it. How many live auction items? Well, we have about thirteen, but I think we're limited to ten. So okay. we're trying to pick. So what point in the program would you do the live auction? That would be after um, right around uh, what is that about eight fifteen we started. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. See you. And then we do the first half, and then we stop and do the fun of family, and then we finish the live auction. Okay. And then everybody goes out to the house party. Yeah. yeah. And the weather looks spectacular. Yeah. Will you be back? I don't know. What? I know my wife.
wife is uh, uh, a friend of ours. Their daughter's getting married. My wife is like the mom, mm. the helper mom. So the, the wedding starts early in the day, so I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, I'm Where's I, it I hope they make it. The wedding? No. <laughs> I just got there. <laughs> it's going. No, no, no. Just going. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> but I know the wedding is earlier in the day. Okay. And so I don't know how big it's going. So. When the, oh, and when I flash fingers, that's how much time is left before commercial. Okay. Oh. So not doing signs. Just don't okay. Okay. flash enough <laughs> fingers. Just this, not. Yeah. <laughs> it all depends on the answer. Three minutes, two minutes. Uh oh, getting close to one. <laughs> Gold springs on this one. Yeah. Huh. Did you ever meet Dee Dee Moreno? Does that name ring a bell? She used to be involved with the charity about 10 years ago. Oh, yeah. That doesn't sound familiar. What does she do? She has a commercial uh, furniture company. And oh. She does all the contracts with most of the hospitals. Oh, wow. Yeah, so nice. I was talking about her last night at a function for First Northern Bank. Oh, good. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Beyond the Numbers on 91055. This is Mark Fellows, your host of this weekly business talk show, Beyond the Numbers. I am, a, uh, in the rest of my life, a tax principal with Clifton Larson Allen. CLA is a, a national CPA firm, offices throughout the U.S., and we've got an office here in Roseville, which is where I'm out of. I work with manufacturers and distributors, uh, real estate developers and investors, contractors, uh, the owners, their uh, you know, and individuals, and all that type of stuff. So planning, strategy, helping people work their way through the new tax law, and then Monday the 15th coming up is the deadline for extended tax returns. So we are busy getting returns done for those who haven't finished their, their return, which I am one. Oh, hoping to finish my returns on time in the next couple of days. We'll have to do it over the weekend. But you know, as it is with this tax guy, my return's always one of the last ones. That's just kind of how it goes. Uh, and I generally have guests on here, try to get uh, people on who have got a great story, business owners, entrepreneurs, that sort of thing. And a lot of times I'm able to on who's involved with the not-for-profit. So I've had numerous uh, executive directors on, and that's who we've got today. So today we've got Reed Baumgarten, the executive director of Keaton's Child Cancer Alliance. Good morning. Good morning, Reed. Good morning, Mark. And then we also have a family navigator, Sarah Perry. Good morning, Sarah. Good morning. How are you guys doing today? Doing well. Doing well, thank you. Yeah, Reed, your drive-in was from Ione. Yeah, well, I'm kind of in between Ione and Jackson, so, so that lovely bit of highway 16. Hall. So yeah. How long did it take you to get here? It's funny, you said an hour and a half. Uh, about an hour and a half, yeah. Normally it's about 45 minutes, so, but that morning commute's always fine. It's rough. Well, thanks for being here today. I appreciate you guys being on, Thank you on the show. Comments. And Sarah, you came from Auburn, so like me, kind of down 80. Mm -hmm. So, so uh, can you tell us a little bit about, Reed, what Keaton's Child Cancer Alliance does, and also maybe a little bit about what their name used to be. Sure. Well, uh, Keaton Child Cancer Alliance used to formerly be known as Keaton Raphael Memorial, and it was started about 21 years ago uh, out of Roseville by Robin and Kyle Raphael shortly after their son passed away from cancer. Mm -hmm. And what we do is, is basically when a child is diagnosed in Northern California, uh, the cancer centers primarily from all the major healthcare systems refer the families to us basically to help build a support network around them to ensure that the child gets to every scheduled appointment. Because when we can do that, survival, which is at a national rate about 80%, locally we're here at about 90%, so significantly higher. And a lot of it has to do with, again, having that child get to every appointment, because if they miss an appointment, that cancer has the opportunity to strengthen back up and weaken the body overall, which ultimately could result in a poor survival outcome. So how, how does the organization help uh, the kids get to the appointments and such? 
So specifically, what we do is through our family navigators, like Sarah, is we actually develop relationships with the actual families. I'll let Sarah describe that a little bit, what that's like, if you don't mind, Sarah. Yeah, of course. So my role as a family navigator is to essentially establish a relationship with the families that are referred to our program very early on. And I do that by getting to know them, checking in with them, um, building a rapport with them. And the point of that is to identify what barriers do exist for the family in order to help get them to and from treatment. And an example of that could be transportation. A lot of our families are traveling very far to get their child to and from treatment. So we'll step in to provide gas cards, auto repairs, um, you name it. So whatever we can do to um, identify the needs of the family, that's essentially my role as a family navigator and then to ultimately address those needs so that way they can focus on their child and treatment and their immediate family. Right. And yeah. how many families do you work with at a time, Sarah? Um, it varies, but right now, I mean, active new referrals, I have personally about 10 to 15. Um, within our Family Navigator program, there's about, there's myself, our director, Jessica Alonzo, and then we also have interns in our Family Navigator, and they all have their own caseload as well, about 10 to 15 new referrals. And so with that, we also follow families way back. Um, once a family's referred to our program, we continue to do case management with them. So we'll be checking into families from a year past, two years past. Right. So our caseload is pretty large, actually. Yeah, on average, we stay with a family about three and a half years. Three and a half years. Yeah, the other thing I wanted to mention with Sarah is I'm not talking about the obstacles the families face, those barriers. One of the things that we really do is also partner with um, local businesses, actually over 230 local businesses that allow us to do the automotive repair. That it right now is a, a hot topic simply because our families cannot take public transportation because the children don't have immune systems. And so because of that, they can't be exposed to right. just anybody. So they rely heavily on their automobiles and over 94% of our families are at poverty level or below. So the last thing they have funds, have funds to spend on is the care of their car. Sure, sure. Yeah. So I feel like we should have our own mechanic shop at this point because we deal with so many repairs. Right, right. And, and we partner with various yeah. uh, businesses throughout the community that support that and, and that provide those services. That is absolutely correct. For our families. Yeah. For the families of KCC, well, that's good. Reed, tell us, how long have you been with the, the organization? So I'm actually just at two years with the organization. Okay. Yeah, no, flew, it has flown yeah, by. That's right. Where were yeah. we at before that? So my background is oncology, and I was in a large pharmaceutical company for many, many years, uh, specifically AstraZeneca, specializing in oncology. Um, so and with that, I left that and started up my own little manual manufacturing company focusing on antimicrobial copper, and uh, sometimes you don't get the right partners, and so we made a decision to basically kind of go our separate ways, and one of my personal hobbies is making olive oil, so I bought a little ranch out near Jackson, hence where I live all the way out in my own area. Um, and I got a phone call from one of the board members asking me if I'd be interested, and sure enough, I wasn't quite sure what I was getting into, but it's been probably the two most rewarding years I've ever had in my professional career. Working longer hours, working harder, but uh, great people, and just an unbelievably worthwhile cause. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I've been on the board, as you guys know, of, the, of KCC for a number of years, and so um, it's Kathy who's the one who reached out yep. to you, right? that's right. Yeah. So I think the organization is fantastic. That's why I'm glad you guys are able to come on today and tell us about it and what you guys, uh, what KCC does and, and the families yeah. they serve and how we can continue to provide that and grow. And, and speaking of growth, tell yeah. us a little bit about what we've done. Oh, I keep saying we. That's about okay. KCC, Party. Yeah, KCC has done lately in terms of growth. Well, just to kind of set the stage a little bit of what the actual picture looks like, just say right now in Northern California. So in Northern California, there are over 800 newly diagnosed children every year. And that number is growing every year. Luckily, unfortunately, survival is actually growing faster than actual diagnosis. So more and more kids are surviving, as mentioned, 90%. But with that, we have done such a great job here in the local market, that being the five counties of the Sacramento greater area, that the hospitals in the East Bay, in particular UCF Benioff Children's Hospital of Oakland, which used to be the Children's Hospital of Oakland, right. um, they, we have been working with them, but we've never really had a family navigator presence in that area. 
And so the hospital, when they learned just exactly the kind of program we have up here, were like, why don't we have that down here? And so they pretty much put it right to me. We want it, we need to have it sooner rather than later. And so in talking with other community partners, um, give something back, which is a local furniture supply and a uh, uh, supply store down in the East Bay. Let's take a break. Oh, Sorry. gotcha. <laughs> we have to cut you off right there. We're going to take a break. When you come back, we'll continue the conversation with Reed and Sarah of KCCA. Now we know the Pac-Man symbol. <laughs> okay, got the Pac-Man. <laughs> Sorry, I should have been. Jerry was giving me the fingers back. Uh, I thought we could do it. I thought we could be able to. Oh, that's right. I was trying to find it. Like this, I was like, what the heck is that? That's that's that is commercial. Well. <laughs> commercial, okay. Commercial. <laughs> Can you guys hear me okay? Yeah, yeah you're perfectly fine. Oh, okay. Yeah. Good. Can you hear okay in notes or mm -hmm. no? Yeah. Just making sure. No, that's good. Good. Awesome. This is a shorter break. The one at the half is a little longer. Okay. okay. So. Nice. Kirk is watching. Kirk Tabor. So. Oh, very good. <laughs> Yeah. He's busy busy man right now. Yeah. Is that the Google Live feed? Is that what it is? Facebook Live. Facebook Live, mm -hmm. okay. And then I'll put it on video. It'll be on my YouTube channel. Nice. Goodbye Friday. This oh, I guess because I'm going to have to This is the last time I did that. I should have a story, shouldn't I? And we're back. You're listening to Beyond the Numbers on my 105.5. I'm your host, Mark Bellows. I'm a tax principal with Clifton Larson Allen in the Roseville office. CLA is a national CPA firm with offices throughout the U.S. I'm a tax guy. I work with manufacturers and distributors, real estate developers, investors, and contractors. The businesses, their owners, planning, strategy, compliance, that sort of thing. And then uh, I also get a chance to host this weekly business talk show. And if you want to get hold of me, by the way, work my number is 906-784-7800 or mark.bellows at claconnect.com. And today we're talking with Reed Baumgarten and Sarah Perry of Keaton's Child Cancer Alliance. If you want to get a hold of Reed or the Sarah, you can 916-784-6786. Reed's email is reed.baumgarten at childcancer.org. You can also go to childcancer.org to find out uh, more information about KCCA and including the upcoming gala event, which will be Saturday after next. Saturday, next Saturday, next Saturday, next Saturday, next Saturday. <laughs> next Saturday, and we'll get into that in a couple of minutes. But you're telling us about how um, mm -hmm. Case Keaton Raphael and the KCCA has been was working with Sacramento area mm -hmm. hospitals, has been doing that for a number of years, and now you've also been you've had uh, Oakland reach out to us. That's right. So I was just mentioning, uh, give something back a local company that provides office furniture. They um, allowed us to actually have free office space, which for a charity like ours is yeah. tremendous. Yeah. And so with that opportunity, we've been developing the relationship down there, working more closely with the Children's Hospital, uh, well, the UCF Benioff Children's Hospitals, as well as with the Open Kaiser, um, and a little bit with Stanford, but it allows us to have more of a presence, and we're going to continue to grow that. We're growing at a grassroots, so we're working with local businesses in that community to raise money locally for that program specifically. Right, right. That we were recognized in the community as a local organization. But uh, no, I mean, generally right now, we commit to reaching 150 kids. Total with financial grants, on average, we probably provide uh, about just shy of 300 families and kids with some form of financial assistance, but 150 will get a financial grant of $500. Um, it's a far cry from 800. Yeah. So we have a long way to go. A long way to go. Yeah. 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 But we never turn anyone away. We've never turned a family away, and we never will. So Sarah, tell us a little bit about uh, what are the families. Yeah. When you when you start meeting with them and working with them, I know we have the hope chest, and so maybe tell about some of that kind of stuff. Yeah. So once a family's referred to us, initially I'll reach out to them, introduce myself, share a little bit about our program and what we do. And then that's when we start putting together the hope chest that you just mentioned, which is really a customized care package for the patient and all siblings involved as well, resources for the parents, and it includes different materials that keep them busy in the hospital, different education material for the parents, 
and then gifts and goodies for the patient and the siblings as well. And it also includes a blanket with their uh, name sewn on it. So it's a very personalized, customized gift that we been, begin building right away. Mm -hmm. And with that, we ideally will hand deliver it to the child and their family at their treatment facility. And that really is our first touch with the family. And by yeah. hand delivering it to them, it really allows us to put a face to our organization. It lets them know who we are and that really starts off our relationship with the family. Um, from there, we continue to check in with the families, uh, see how their appointments are going, see what needs are coming up, and the goal of that is to let them know that we're really a one-stop shop for them, that they can turn to for any questions they have at all. Um, during my time as a family navigator, I've really learned that every single family is incredibly unique and presents a very unique set of needs. So once I begin that relationship with the family, I learn a lot about each one as an individual family and just really trying to be there for them, to support them, and um, so that way they can really focus on their child and treatment. Right. And I think one of the remarkable things about what KCCA does is that it's, it's it, which speaks to your role, is it's a family navigator. Mm -hmm. So it's not just the child with cancer, but the whole family, and when a child has cancer, the whole family's affected. And that is what you guys work with the whole family, the siblings who, who you know, are going through their own issues with that, and then the child, you know, their brother or sister being diagnosed, and the parents, and all the stresses that comes with and all that. So I think that's a really remarkable, kind of unique role that KCCA plays, working with the family. Yeah, thank you. And I think we all treat childhood cancer as a family disease. Mm -hmm. And that is why we are always making sure that the siblings are recognized and acknowledged as well through our events, you know, special sibling events, um, any opportunity we can to take care of the family as a whole because we realize their roles change and everyone's really sacrificing during this time. So we want to try to keep them together as a unit as much as possible. Yeah, because as you can imagine, I mean, the, hearing the news your child has cancer is probably the most devastating news you'll ever get you know because we always believe no child you know every every child should outlive their parents of but when these things come up the distraction that's created the emotional cost to the families of which if it's fortunate to fam two parent family which family member or which parent is going to leave their job because the average course of treatment is a year and a half to two years you know and you're in every four weeks for treatment a break over the weekends and then you go back then you have a little bit of a break and you start your next round, but I mean, it is continuous. And so as a parent, you know, you have to be there. And the hospital also requires the parent to be present at the same time. So then there's that singular focus of taking care of this child. And then there's the siblings. Now, when you meet these families, I mean, they're incredibly um, supportive and I mean, and uplifting. And what I mean by that is, is that the siblings are like, mom, dad, it's okay, take care of my brother or sister. You know, where the child that has cancer is, mom, dad, it's okay, why are you so upset? You know, because they haven't lived that full life yet. Yeah. But wherever you turn, you can just see how they're each trying to support each other. Yet for the parents who are the financial breadwinners for the families, it's, you know, it's, it, we can't comprehend of the cost and the takeaway it is. And so for us to be focusing on the family as a unit, that support network I mentioned earlier, it starts with the family. So if we can keep the family in a good mental spirit and good health, to overall health, then they're gonna be able to be around that child. And that will have a direct emotional impact on that child in treatment. And then subsequently, the people around them, that spider web of support will grow with the connections we bring in, but also with them feeling more comfortable to reach out to others. So it, it focusing the family is paramount to everything we do. Yeah, it really is. Which is uh, again, I think it's remarkable and somewhat unique, it seems to me. Um, you mentioned events for the family and the siblings. So maybe tell us about what, what the various events are that happen throughout the year. Sure, so we have two large signature family events. One is coming up and it's our holiday event. It's called Holly Jolly. And so it's entirely free for the families of our program. It's one of our largest family events and we have everything there. We have Santa, dinner, desserts, activities for the kids, family portraits. Um, it's really a wonderful opportunity for our parents to meet other families that unfortunately are going through the same um, experience. And that's another piece that we really try to support is that peer-to-peer -peer connection. And 
piggybacking off of what Reed just said, just by making those connections to other families, it really empowers them to seek other resources, find out about other services, support one another. So the event is a great opportunity for them to just take a night off of their you know, day to day routine and then also meet other families and have a wonderful time. And then another. So, and when is, when is that going to be this year? That's Wednesday, December 5th. Okay, Wednesday, December 5th. Holly Jolly, where, and where is that at? That is at the Citrus Heights <coughs> Community Center okay. at 5 p.m. Okay, great. And then we have our signature Thunderland event in the summertime. And again, that's a free event for our families and another opportunity for them to come out, enjoy the day. We have food, all the rides, and different activities. A lot of volunteers come out to support that event as well. And those are our two largest family events throughout the year. And then we also do a lot of different paint nights and various activities for smaller groups. So, um, like the rock climbing event we've done for siblings primarily. Um, throughout the year we try different things to reach different families and so it looks different each year, but right, right. we try to provide as many of those opportunities as possible. That's great. And so, um, so you've got these events for the families, you have the, the meetings and you guys, and you, when you meet the family initially and provide the hope chest and kind of get to know them, but you continue to stay in contact with them, as you mentioned, throughout the course of treatment. Right, and, and I think beyond. that's what makes us a bit unique is a lot of times we hear families say that they get reached out to in the very beginning, they're provided you know, one type of service and that's it. But with us, we really want to get to know the family, let them know we'll be there throughout the course of their treatment and beyond into survivorship. And so I think that's a really wonderful piece of our program is the fact that we do provide case management over the course of their entire treatment and beyond. Yeah, the doors always still open, but on average we're with the family about three and a half years is, is our continuous uh, interaction. But we've had families, because every disease is a little bit different, we have some children who go in and out of relapse, so we're seven plus years with certain families. But the door never ends, and in the fortunate circumstance where the child does pass away, we still have families still interacting with us you know, through the bereavement, yeah. but also as support for other families. And so. It's, it really never ends, you know. We try to emphasize that whole family atmosphere at the at the at our office as well. Right. So, whereabouts have you uh, the families come from? The Sacramento area, and I know like Woodland. I mean, what where, where, what other areas? Predominantly, they come from Sacramento, mm -hmm. but uh, we got a lot from Placer County. We get some all the way down from Bishop, all the way down near Mammoth. Um, down the Central Valley, Stockton, North, um, all the way up to the Oregon border, uh, but pretty much they'll come from everywhere. And are these families that are coming to Sacramento for treatment, typically? Sacramento or San Francisco. Oh, San Francisco. Yeah. So I'm in the networks that ties them better. Our expansion into Oakland as well. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. We know there's a lot of kids who are waiting to get access to us. It's just we have to get more resources that will provide them support. Yeah. That's a key thing is getting more resources. For yeah, sure. partnering up, absolutely. Yeah. So how do uh, how does a family get referred into KCC? So, when uh, several ways. The primary way is when a child is diagnosed at the cancer center. The <coughs> child life specialists and social workers there will basically do an initial assessment. We have provide them with a form so that they can basically go down a checklist. But they do the initial line assessment and then they then refer them to us. We also have some families that move into the area that were treated other places, but okay. then get back involved or relapse, and then the community uh, referrals happen that way as well. But the majority of is from the hospitals themselves. From the hospitals themselves. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay. It's from the hospitals themselves. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so, um, do you have a lot of interaction then with the hospitals? I know we have some uh, board members that are from hospitals. Yeah, well, from the board aspect, yes. We want to have representation on board from all the hospitals so that they're all aware of what we do because. We are very unique, as I mentioned earlier, what we do when we directly support their efforts because their social workers are so overtasked to begin with that they re rely on Sarah and Jessica and the interns to pick up what they can't do. And so because of that, we have a very, very strong relationship with all the cancer, pediatric cancer centers specifically. Okay. Yeah. So you have interns that work there. Mm -hmm. How many interns do you have? So this year we have the most amount we've ever had. So we have four interns. So we've been growing in that department as well. And that's thanks to our unique relationship with the different school systems, including Sac State, San, Bern 
San Bernardino, and <laughs> I could say that, <laughs> and uh, Northern New Mexico. So. Northern New Mexico, they're coming from all over. Mm -hmm. That's great. And we have our first masters of social work right. that are working with us now as well. Uh, so interning or working? Interning. Okay. Yeah, interning. So this is something that I know Jessica has wanted to do for quite some time, and as the program has grown and the reputation has grown. We're getting people being referred to us from New Mexico, um, all over now, and so it's really expanding opportunities. And having a master of social work just just allows us to reach a whole other level of support for families we have in the past. Excellent. Okay, well, we're we're going to uh, take a break. When we get back, we'll continue the conversation with Reed and Sarah from Keaton's Child Cancer Alliance. You listen to Beyond the Numbers. Like, I know what's happening, you're going to get cut off. <laughs> I know, because I'm like, I see you're going to wave, like, watch your hand, and I'm like, here it comes, here it comes. And I see this, and it's like this, and it's like, cut it off, so it's too funny. And my eye, my hand signals are somewhat inconsistent. It's Sorry. okay, yeah, no, no it's, you know. I saw it. We have social, we have social workers to help you with that, so, yeah. <laughs> I think I need it. <laughs> How long have you been doing this now? Where's your show? This my fifth year. So I met the invited of you to be your co-host at the golf tournament. Katie? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. No. Very sweet. Yeah, she's great. So she has her own company now, right? She has her own company, Ed, Ed Hire, I believe it's called. Mm -hmm. And okay. she uh, is partnering up with Mark Haney. So. Oh, that's what she told me. Yeah. Haney Biz. Okay. Do you, does Haney Biz do much for the Well, um, yeah, they are not yet, but um, Michael Wagner you know, does yeah. a lot with them. And okay. so Haney Biz mm -hmm. is a global sponsor for our game oh, this year. Yeah, good. so we're developing that relationship. So Mark, uh, Michael uh, helped bring that one. Oh, good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mark Haney's uh, and his son Mark is having both of them. They're great guys. Yeah. Great guys. Well, very involved in things. So that's yeah. great. No, we're excited about that. Yeah, yeah so Katie's kind of partnered up with him to do this sort of hiring company. Okay. What a hiring company oh. yeah, so. But you're, I want to get her back on the show as a guest, so hopefully soon. So. Okay. Yeah. Oh, very good. Yeah. No, she was playing there, yeah. Yeah, no, she was there. And, uh, yeah, no, and then, um, yeah, a lot of good people at that. It was a fun tournament. How'd you Which play? one was that? This was um, uh, less like Raw and Glover and um, Orange and Thunders. Oh, okay. Fall Charity Classic. Yes, okay, good. good it's one you just went to, right? Right, mm -hmm. that's right. Yeah. Every third year with the recipient? Yes, Is that right? okay. every third year. So they have one one person from less like Raw and Glover and one person from Orange and Thunder. They mm. choose each each company chooses a charity, and then they split the proceeds hmm. between the two. And nice. so, for the Wesley Grand and Glover, every third year they've chosen. Well, this is their fifth year, so two so two times they've chosen okay. KCC. Yeah, yeah. And then Warren cool. Vander always picks the lymphoma. Uh, yeah, they're the real big. Mm. Um, but Roland and a bunch of them. Yeah, they are on the board. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. But fun tournament. Yeah. Good tournament. But the weather was, was nice. Tournament. Oh my god, compared to two years ago, yes. with pouring rain, oh. I mean, the whole day pouring and rain. And they just started when that one happened. That was, uh, well, we weren't going to fishery that year, but I went to health anyways. Okay. And so I was actually at the hole with Amy Matthews from First Northern oh, yeah. Bank. And so we were doing the John Daly and the um, <laughs> and little uh, little drinks. <laughs> I don't remember the John Daly. She had a, they had a thing this time. It was cool. So this drop of a drink mixer. Yeah, yeah. drink mixer. Yeah, yeah. it was a very cool machine. I got to go over there and see it. So. Did you? <laughs> did you partake? And then I did have one. Just was it good? I, it was delicious. Okay. actually. Because you can actually limit the amount of alcohol you wanted. You can modify it. So I, being on the job, put the alcohol yeah. down. <laughs> so <laughs> other people did not oh, apparently. No, so, but not. no. So I did. It was actually a very cool machine. Yeah. You had a little menu. You had sixteen choices to choose yeah. from. You what? dial it in. You hit yeah. it. It's crazy. We're back. You're listening to Beyond the Numbers on my 105.5 FM, part of the Wall Street Business Network. This is your host of this fine show, Mark Bellows. The uh, Beyond the Numbers is a weekly business talk show uh, that uh, we have guests come on that are generally business owners, entrepreneurs, um, CFOs, CEOs, presidents, that sort of thing, and then also like to bring in uh, 
not for profit organizations and get an, an idea of what's going on with them and give them some chance to let the, the community know what's happening. And, and one of the ones that I've been involved with for a number of years is Keaton's Child Cancer Alliance. And so today we've got the executive director, Reed Baumgarten, and one of the family navigators, Sarah Perry, on the show with us. So, Reed, maybe go into a little bit about for our audience about how a KCC gets its funding. So, it's, no, that's need, a great question. More. Oh, well, oh, yes. We could like every number more. Like, exactly. Yeah. You know, I mean, this has been a very unique year for nonprofits, in particular with the tax changes and yes. the limitations on personal itemizations. Uh, but for us, because of the unique nature of what we do, we kind of fall in between federal and state funding. So all of our funding comes from corporate donations and grants and private donations. Those so nothing, the nothing from the feds. Nothing from the feds. The county, no, nothing from the feds. Yeah, I mean, that's just not an, an area that they... No, uh, no, because I mean, it, it, when you first look at it, when you hear a child diagnosis, you know, the child themselves generally will have insurance. You know, for our families, most of it's Medi-Cal, but for other families, it's the private insurance that employers usually offer them. Um, so with that, the thought is, okay, they have insurance, but people don't think about, again, the impact of the in, on the entire family. And family members, you know, you can't send a sibling in to get therapy necessarily when their child is diagnosed, because the Medi-Cal doesn't normally cover that. So and it's, your, it's a gray your, area. And to your point, I mean, uh, generally a parent, maybe a lot of times our families have been working, two parent families and two parents working, and one is gonna have to stay with the child. Mm -hmm. they can't treat them, so they have to leave their job. So, mm -hmm. no, I have insurance. Medi-Cal doesn't cover. No, the last they don't. Wages. Yeah. You know, but these are the real life consequences yeah. of things. And so, with that, you know, when we share our story, you know, we go out to the community. I do many presentations, um, and we submit many grants. We work with a grant writer, uh, Deanne, who's absolutely fantastic, and that's what we rely on. Um, and it's really about getting the word out there. And the best way you can do that is by getting other organizations and individuals exposed to what we do. Right. Um, volunteerism is a, a wonderful thing, you know, because when you get our volunteer army going, there's no better way to spread what we do. Uh, but for the corporations, you know, a lot of them now incorporate volunteerism with their corporate giving, which is fantastic, because then their companies kind of really get a sense of what's going on. And I purpose why I bring that up is one of the other big ways, or one of the great ways for companies and individuals to actually have a first touch of our organization is through our adopt a family program that we do at the end of the year for the holidays. And uh, the, between the last two years, we've been averaging around 50 families. And it all depends on, one, how many companies get involved, but this is a great way for a company to get a first touch because they're gonna learn about a family. And Jessica and Sarah assign a family to each company, and they get a and little question. these are families that are, have a child with cancer. Absolutely. Are, are, that we're affiliated with. And yep. again, I imagine, child has cancer, you're taking, you're going to treatments, and then somehow you've got to plan your holiday. Whatever the holiday, Christmas or whatnot, I mean, that, that's, that's Most just, families don't want to celebrate yeah, the holiday, quite they frankly. Not. They just kind of want to retreat in. Um, and that's just general human nature. When you think about traumatic situations, we generally retreat in, focus on what we do, get a bit of tunnel vision. Uh, but a lot of times, just because of the devastation, they just they don't feel like it. But there couldn't be anything more important than giving them that holiday. So spirit. that's why KCC has, has, oh, yeah. has brought about the Adopt a Family program. And so, mm -hmm. so when that comes about, early December, presumably late November, early December. So yep. it gives, like you mentioned, it gives companies uh, and, and, and potential donors the first chance to really get into what the organization is about and how we uh, how we work with and, and help out families that are going through this traumatic exactly. situation. Yeah. Yeah, so Adopt a Family is one. Um, we uh, KCC also is the been the recipient of some golf tournaments. Mm -hmm. right? We just had one last weekend where uh, with the Warren G. Bender and Westlake Grawlin Glover tournament. That's right. Um, what's the one in Fairfield that uh, was that? Oh, that's the McCarthy Construction. McCarthy Construction. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. So we've had situations like that where KCC gets some funding and of course uh, individual donations. Yeah, we're so appreciative of that. Yeah, and then one of the big fundraisers is what's coming up next Saturday. That's right, it's our Glow for Gold Gala. So uh, this is our sixth year, sixth year uh, okay. doing the gala. And uh, this year is, uh, I like to say, I can't give too much away, but we're breaking all the rules. Breaking so, the rules. and, and I, I need to give my board chair credit for this. That's Josh Hart yep. from Wells Fargo. Josh Hart, well, um, been the board chair. This is, this is second year. year, yeah. This is his final year as board chair. 
Uh, we already have other people we're talking to, you know, but uh, Josh, um, you know, he, he, he loves galas, and he's been wanting to do a gala particular style, and he wanted to break all the rules. Yeah. And I'm not going to give too much away, but he I has, mean... He has some good, some, <laughs> some good ideas about the He's gala got a little bit of passion that, behind yeah, it, absolutely yeah. does, which is yeah. just awesome. He yeah. brings it out, and he shows all of it. And so this year... Uh, we really embrace that, and so what I mean, we're gonna break all the rules. It's not gonna be like any other gala that you heard of. Um, I'm not gonna give too much away, uh, but I will give away that it is a masquerade theme ball. Okay. And it's at the event center at 2300 off Sierra Boulevard, not too far from Sac State, almost behind the pavilions okay. uh, in that area. But they have a wonderful venue. We had it held there last year, but we're able to incorporate an outside patio and an indoor um, dining hall. And so we have a pre-party, then we have the main program inside, and then we have an after party. And plenty of opportunities for just libations, entertainment, but it truly is a celebration of life more than anything else for our families that are currently, all of our families. And when you go there, it's a feel-good environment um, with an opportunity to get some amazing uh, live auctions, silent auctions, um, raffles, all kinds of activity. So come bring change. Uh, <laughs> you know, we do take credit cards, of course. Absolutely, yes. But it really and, is and going to be a checks, very so. unique evening. Yeah, so it'll be, uh, It's and this is, again, this is a big, main, main big fundraiser. This is our largest fundraiser to do for the year, yeah. Yeah, and so... What was the budget of KCC last year? So our budget was just about $871,000, roughly. Um, so and before that, our budget was about 556000 So we made a conscientious effort to focus um, more development or, sorry, um, more resources to our family operator program. Um, up until last year, we just had one family navigator. So this year, last year, we brought Sarah Perry on as our second. Sarah was one of our interns from Sac State, and she was so phenomenal, we just couldn't let her go. And so she's here. Fortunately, she stayed with us, which is even better. But uh, yeah, no, I mean, we are dedicated to really growing that family our program. That is our core. That's what we do. Um, and we have to reinvest in what we do. And in order to reach all 800 children in Northern California, ultimately, we're going to have to get more. But we can only do what we can with our resources. And when you break down our expenditure or our allocation costs, basically 3% goes to administration. And basically 8% goes to the uh, fundraising. Um, and then the, basically the 89% goes to our families, to programs directly. Right. And so we're very proud. We run a very efficient ship, you know, to reach as many families as you can. And last year was a very good year in the sense that when we normally give about 150, we were able to give about 225 financial grants last year. Right. Um, because, you know, we made we made a decision when the money comes in, it's going right back out to the families. Right. Well, 89 cents on the dollar going back out to programs is, is a good number. Yeah, we're very proud That's of that number. number. We're very proud of that. You know, I mean, we would, you know, we, we just we'd love to have great more staff, but sure. in time we'll get that. As more and more people are aware of what we do, and more and more people get involved, they're going to see the direct impact and the immediate impact it has on the families within our community. Because you know, if the community gets behind, you know, the shall we say those community members who are in you know difficult situations, the community as a whole, it pays off. It, everyone benefits. So, so of course, being a not for profit as a board of directors, mm -hmm. as you mentioned, I'm on the board. Um, and how many people are on the board at the at present? Right now we have 12. 12, okay. Which, yeah. And it was Josh, again, Josh Hart's the chair. Mm -hmm. Josh, and uh, and um, there's also an executive committee, a smaller group that meets as well. But the board is, uh, we, are you trying to grow it beyond the 12? We are, absolutely. Um, like I mentioned earlier, you know, we have board representation from all the hospitals, you know. So there's, whenever there's changeover, you know, we get a little bit of change in leadership. So right so now. Sutter. Sutter, UC Davis, UC Davis Kaiser, Kaiser dentist. Uh, Adventist, uh -huh. and um, UCSF Children's Hospital. Okay. Okay. Um, we're looking. We'll, we'll be getting board member from Mercy. Okay. Um, Mercy and Adventist are in unique situations. They don't have direct pediatric oncology programs, gotcha. so their children go to other local, and that's generally UC Davis or UCSF. It all depends. Um, but you know, Kaiser has its own system, um, but uh, they also we still treat their families. And so we want representation from all the hospitals on there so they can help guide us and guide our navigators and put us into the correct contact with the social workers and the child life specialists. But 
also very importantly, we want to have representation from the community, such as mm -hmm. yourself um, and the other board members. We want to have a board that's representative of who we represent in the community as well. Right, right. So we need to grow. Yeah, yeah. And you have 100% board participation in terms of fundraising. That's right, you do. Which is important. Thank you very much. much. Well, and I uh, just say, I think that's important to have because that shows that, that, the, that the board members believe in the organization and therefore the organization you know, has a little more value to the board potential donors. I know a lot of times donors will, that's one of the questions potential donors will ask, you know, how much of your board gives back? No, absolutely. If something less than 100% then that makes them question why. Yeah, board is our greatest representation of who we are. So in the community. walk the talk. Well, the families and, and, and the patients and the kids are a representation of what you guys do. Yeah. All right, we're going to take a break. When we get back, we'll continue the conversation with Reed and Sarah of Keaton's Child Cancer Alliance. You're so humble. <laughs> Well, it's just, but I do think that's important. It is, without question. Grants, because that's one question I think in grants quite mm -hmm. often is board financial participation. You know, the United Way mandates it. Yeah. And so, and then uh, big day of giving as well. Is, is it a short break? Or? Yeah, no, one minute. I'll just have to beat dog at that one. Yeah, that one. Um, and then just in general, all of the um, Guide Star, you know, they all look at that and they rate that. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's very, very important. important. Yeah. But I mean, you also want to touch on, you know, the representation of the just, you know, the breakup of the demography of the kids from ethnicity so far. Do you well. want to touch on that? We can, absolutely. Do you want to, well, it's the same topic. Yeah, we can talk about that. Do you want to touch on the makeup of the kids and the demography? Um, you probably might okay. be able to touch on that. Welcome back. You're listening to Beyond the Numbers on Money 1055. This is Mark Bellas, your host of this weekly business talk show. I am a tax principal with Clifton Larson Elms. He's a, uh, a national CPA firm, eighth biggest in the U.S., with offices throughout the U.S. and affiliations with uh, offices and companies throughout the world. And uh, if you have any tax questions or business questions or accounting questions, you can get a hold of me down at 678-4780 or mark.bellows at claconnect. Com. Also, if you want to ask me about what it's like to be involved with KCCA from a board point of view, I'm uh, more than happy to talk about that as well. I really do think this is a great organization. I actually got introduced to KCCA years ago when I was in my local Starbucks before work one day and they had a flyer up for the St. Baldrick's. You know, shave your head, earn, raise money. I thought, well, that's easy to do. I have short hair anyway. I can shave it down. And, and uh, So I, I did that fundraiser for St. Baldrick's that year. I think it was like eight years ago or so. And, uh, and through the course of that, met Anne, who was uh, involved with the board through First Northern Bank. And she very quickly thought I should, because she knows new people at the firm I was with prior to this going in. So she very quickly thought I should get involved with the organization and convinced me, as Anne did with numerous people. And then, uh, and then I was able to join the board. So tell us a little bit about how the partnership with KCCA and St. Baldrick's sure. works. So just, you know, our mission is to support, is to provide financial, educational, and emotional support to families. But it's also to increase awareness and raise funds towards a cure. And so with the focus on to raise funds towards a cure, when St. Baldrick started up, um, and a little bit of background. So St. Baldrick's, just to tie it in, because it was started by three Irish guys in a bar. Now, it sounds like a bad joke. Uh -huh. But they have now made St. Baldrick's the largest fundraiser for research in the United States. It's huge. And that's what St. Baldrick's is for, is can yeah. childhood that's cancer That's exactly research. what it's for. Childhood cancer research. Uh, pediatric cancer research. Yeah, 100%. Money has to be okay. used for that. And so um, our founder, uh, Robin Raphael, um, was aware of it and reached out to them right when they started. And so with that... Uh, Robin was able to create this partnership, and we've been doing it now for 17 years. Wow. And what that partnership allows us to do is it allows us to host these head shaving events um, for those that have 
hair on their heads, which you do. Yeah. This is radio. <laughs> I don't. Yeah. So, uh, but so people ask, well, what are you involved with it? So right now I'm trying to grow some facial hair. We do do yeah. beards too. Yeah. It's the whole head. It's not the top yes, of the head. Yes, yes. So, you can do that. Be perfect. But with that, um, what it's it's just a, it was a great fit for us in the sense that you know as we're trying to increase awareness, here's this an incredible program where rallying around shaving a head you know and at first sight it's like why the head but when a child or an adult for that matter goes through chemo one of the characteristic signs is the loss of head hair you know facial hair um, and so with that there's this act of solidarity and yeah, because a lot of times the child will lose their hair and so right. the, the parent uh, the sibling uh, whatever family members a lot of times their own friends will want to shave their head in solidarity yeah it's a very tangible and very you know visual display of yes. support yes. Um, and with that what we've is created is this team competition aspect of it you know and so we've been we initially kicked it off with the Westfield uh, Roseville uh, mall is where we open up our series events and they start at the very beginning of March or the end of February, and then they pretty much go through the, ton of the, the month of March. We do 10 events, and we raise, on average, over $550,000 every year. You know, Some years are better than others, but on average, we have always hit that $550,000. Which, by the way, that's money for St. Baldrick's, not KCC. Anyway. Correct. So, so just so people are clear, because sometimes when, I, when I'm asking for funds to shave my head, I have to point out this is actually not for KCCA, which it was, but it's for St. Baldrick's, which is a great cause. Which is, that is absolutely and correct. One of the great things, I'm trouble cutting into what you're That's okay, yeah, no, no, no. Some of that money we've been able to keep in turn and use the local research. That's right. And so with a portion of that, that funds go to UC Davis right now and to the UCSF Children's Hospital in Oakland. Um, the stipulation is, is that they have to have um, original research. And in the Sacramento area, the UC Davis Comprehensive Cancer Center um, is that organization. They have the largest in our community down here. And then we also partnered up with the UCSF. At the time, it was the Children's Hospital of Oakland, and now it's part of the UCF Benioff Children's Hospitals. And so those two organizations were it very just proud. rolls right off your tongue. Now. It does now. It, it, it takes a while. I mean, yeah. Cho is so much easier, but you know, I mean, yeah. you get it. You yeah. got to practice. Like our name is just one of those. You got to <laughs> practice as well. Yeah. So KCCA is easier, or just Keaton's. But you know, it, it's just what we want to be able to do is be able to take advantage of this relationship, this partnership. By hosting them, we're able to secure money for these programs. Otherwise, the money goes back, and so over 50% of our money goes back to St. Baldrick's, and that goes in a national pool. But by hosting it, we are able to give back locally. And so I'm proud to say that we are the largest private donor to the UC Davis Comprehensive Cancer Center, and to date we've given over $2 million to fantastic. that program. And they um, do amazing work there. You know, Dr. Marcio Malawankwin, who is actually on our board, but he's the director of pediatric hematology oncology. Then you got you know, Noriko Satake, who is working on some really pioneering um, science to actually help bring the treatment uh, via carrier to a target aspect of the tumors and reduce the side effects. Uh, because uh, on a little side note, um, and it also actually goes to, towards research, is that, is that there is a cost of survivorship to surviving. Um, we are currently using adult treatments for kids. And so what we're doing is we're modifying the doses and trying to find that right balance of toxicity versus killing the cancer. But we are at 90% survival here, but, I'm just keep saying but, the big but is, is that there is a cost to these treatments. Yeah. And that is what we call long-term effects. Yes. And so very you know, simplified, but what we're doing is by attacking the fastest dividing cells, which are cancer cells, um, in adults, the cancer cells are dividing much faster than all the cells, but in kids, systemically, all their organs, all their cells, because they're growing up and developing, are dividing very fast. Right. And so the treatments affect their entire system, not just the cancer. And with that, we are prematurely aging their organs. And so by the time they're 35 or 40, they can theoretically, and we're seeing cardiovascular systems of a 60-year-old individual. You know, but we don't have any other options. Right. You know, and so we're for now. And so the greatest things we can do is nutritional education, um, physical exercise, and then research. Um, and that's one thing that all the health pediatric counselors at UC Davis, in particular here locally, is doing very, very heavy focus on just doing that as well. We have to address the survivorship because uh, you know we owe it to them. We've got them that far, and we want them to live as long as possible. Sure, but sure. there's more work to be done. And these St. Baldrick's events are our best and incredibly effective way 
and having a great time because the Westville one, we also, that's a family oriented one. And, and we have different events with different atmospheres. Um, the and, the one, Westville, and the Westville one's great because you get, you get school kids that go against schools against schools. You okay. get police, firefighters, first responders all there. They can they have a team against each other. It's, it's a fantastic Oh, yeah. It's not like fun. seeing the fire department do burpees on stage. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, I, and, and they're great. And the police department. Yeah. The fire department always upstage the police. So, <laughs> uh, come on, Rockwood Police. Right, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, Rockwood Police. Yes, yes. But it's a ton of fun. And <laughs> then we have the De Beers Pub. Now, a little bit of history of that. So, Rafe De Beer White was the, it was the former director of UC Davis Comprehensive Cancer Center. And he almost single-handedly, along with people, but got the NCI designation for the Comprehensive Cancer, which is a significant achievement. Right. And it brought Davis and our community at a national focus. Um, and so with that, he orig we originally started the program at the UC Davis Comprehensive Cancer Center. And then when his two sons opened up De Beers, Irish pub, which yes. is a fantastic pub, um, they asked their dad, hey, let us bring this on because we want to honor what you have done. And they have created an event, you know, that is like no other. And it is really a party atmosphere, a true celebration where a really team dynamic, where we have the De Beers going consistently against Mulvaney's, Patrick Mulvaney, oh, his yeah, team. Yeah. And between the two of these groups, and I'll give a little bit of a shout out to Patrick Mulvaney and the Mulvaney's, they are the largest individual team fundraiser for St. Baldrick's. Taro from Acunis came in two years ago and in a one-time shot raised more than anybody. Oh, yeah. yeah, he, he was amazing. A, uh, a marketing and an unbelievably yeah, yeah, yeah. good human being. No, he's a great guy. But that's where you want to go, where you want to have just kind of like, it's at a bar environment, it's not necessarily great for kids, so you just want to be aware, but... Kids we, go to Westfield and... <laughs> right, you know, but the families can go. It's very cultural, you know, but it's just, in a, it, it's a unique event all on its own. Um, then we have one down in the Children's Hospital, uh, you said that up Children's Hospital. Uh, and then we also have one, we're actually going to do one for the first time this year at UC Davis, the morning of, and that's really to celebrate the children in the hospital. So a smaller scale one, yeah. but will be for just really the UC Davis campus itself. And then we have one in Elk Grove, we have some at many schools, so we have a total of 10. That's fantastic. And they kick off pretty much January 1 and we start really rocking and rolling and advertising those. And again, that's that's a great organization that, that KCCA has been partnered up with for a number of years, but that itself is not a fundraiser for KCCA. No, it's not. So, uh, you know, if you want to support KCCA, there are numerous ways to do it. One would be, of course, to include KCCA in your will at Bequest, and, and that's always a fantastic way to recognize. Uh, another is to give personal giving, that sort of thing. As you mentioned, 97% of the families are below poverty level, I believe you said. Oh, 94. Yeah. 94, I'm sorry. 94%. So generally, those families, uh, you know, as their child and, and mature grows and the, the ones that survive, et cetera, I mean, they don't, they don't necessarily have the money to give back to KCCA, you know, that is financial support. So we can't look to alumni of the program, if you will, for financial support. So KCCA is looking for opportunities for, for funds, and, and so continue. You know, if that is your bent, if that's your interest, please get a hold of Reed at 906-74-6786 or childcancer.org. You can also get a hold of me and be more than happy to tell you about how to support KCC because it could really use your support to reach out to more than the families are reaching so far. Thanks, you guys, for being on the show. Really appreciate Thank it. You so Thank you so much. Have a fantastic day. Awesome. Thank Excellent. you. Excellent. Thank God, you. I always goes by so fast. Right? I know. Holy cow. It's so crazy.